This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them. Chapter 2 Unlikely Pipers In the autumn of 1996, a 19-year-old Harry Potter look-alike found himself lured into one of America's most frustrating political endeavors, a Libertarian Party presidential campaign. Buried deep in library stacks after the fruitless and overwhelming defeat which ensued, this soft-spoken student grappled with the futility of his party's approach. Grandson of a Regent University historian, he had nursed youthful dreams of becoming a popular professor. These he lived to see by his 27th year, but not before changing, ever so slightly at first, the course of his nation's history. Raised in the ways of evangelical Christianity, subjected to harrowing encounters at government school, he and his three siblings had lived beneath the dreaded poverty line, while their abandoned, resolute mother grappled with degrees and meager employment as a private school teacher. His struggling household accepted the aid of its clan and donations from a Christian charity, while valiantly rejecting the ruinous largesse of state. These experiences did not lead him into Republican ranks. By an honorable inversion, he cherished all the more a sense of loyalty to all concepts of social liberty, and a gentle but ardent admiration for America's lost founding principles. Such were the early fortunes of Jason Sorens. While at university preparing his academic career, the young doctoral student had chosen a topic of study which would lead him rapidly into the real world of outside-the-box politics. That topic was secession. In the years following his frustrations at the hands of the national political system, Sorens pondered all he had learned in his scholarly studies and applied it to the great problem. On July 25th of 2001, he published an article in a small online journal, The Libertarian Enterprise. It recounted the various failed attempts at downsizing government in America and elsewhere and it made a suggestion which was destined to become history. Quote, What I propose is a free state project, he wrote, in which freedom-minded people establish residence in a small state and take over the state government. Unquote. Sorens did not form the idea out of the ether. He took inspiration from similar suggestions, much uh, similar recent suggestions, by economist Walter Williams, the colorful George Mason professor, and Rush Limbaugh substitute. Soren's use of the word takeover was to have negative consequences, his focus on secession was to become a source of distraction, and he seemed an unlikely piper for the backwoods freedom movement. But in these closing weeks of peace, none of that mattered. His idea caught hold like a virus. At the end of his article, Sorens had included a simple action item. Quote, if you are interested in joining this project, please email me at Jason Sorens, or Jason.Sorens at Yale.edu and give me your address. I am going to draw up a simple pledge and some straightforward bylaws for the Free State Society and start collecting signatures. Unquote. Within a day, Sorens had lieutenants of sorts. Within five, he was the proud father of an exploding online community. Its first automated message posted in the final hours of July. From yahoo-dev-null at dot dot dot, Tuesday, 31 July 2001, 2059 hours, to Free State Project at yahoogroups.com. Welcome to the Yahoo message board for the Free State Project. 24 hours brought another 20 posts. Looking back at these first moments of electronic conversation, it is striking to observe how 
greatly, the meat of the plan fell into place within the space of two sunsets. From Roman 18, date Wednesday, August 1st, 2001. Subject, getting the word out. Quote, how do you think we should best disseminate our ideas? Focus primarily on mainly libertarian circles? Invest in public advertisements? Unquote. Subject, getting the word out. From Mars 48066. Quote, I think it is probably best to inform people about it by word of mouth. If too many non-libertarians find out about it, they will find a way to cause this project to fail. Unquote. Post from Nonconformer, date Wednesday, August 1st. Subject, state statistics. Quote, here is a quick summary of the 10 least populous states in the U.S. Unquote. Post from Jason Sorens, date August 1st, 2001. Subject, state statistics. Interesting. Rhode Island looks like... <clears throat> starting over. Quote, interesting. Rhode Island looks good by these criteria, but its political culture is very liberal. Same with Delaware and Hawaii. That makes New Hampshire look pretty good." Unquote. LRN.FM, 24 hours of Liberty Radio every day. Now available on satellite, too. At sat dot lrn dot fm. That's what a satellite sounds like. Put it on your unlicensed station. Wear it in your hair. But above all, don't despair. The liberty message is getting out. And right now, you're missing it. Or maybe you're not. But skip on over to lrn dot fm. Feds don't want you to hear them.